Very <laughs> bows to the Buddha. And bow to the teacher. She's frozen. Might be the connection. I don't know. Let's take a sec. Yeah, we've got techies to work on this. <laughs> I think she had a problem last year, if I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, Wi-Fi seems to be a bit flaky. Mm, well, I live on a hill, so I know that Wi-Fi can be variable. <laughs> Uh, she must have dropped. She might be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is that impermanence you told us about earlier. Yes, indeed. There's an awful lot of that going around. Hello. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Can. can you see the slides? Oh, he hasn't no. tried yet. Yeah. Uh, the slides? No. We see you, venerable. No. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I guess it's crashing and burning on the slides. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Can you see the screen? That's what's happening. We see you, but not the slides. It's like the burning house, no. <laughs> huh? Burning house? No, no, I said the slides are like the burning house for a minute. Let's hope it's not like that. Oh, it's not moving. Oh, now she's back. She's back. Sorry, I had a problem each time when I... Uh... Share screen. Let's hope this time is working. So it takes a while. Ah, uh, it's starting. There Here we, we go. go. Here we Can go. you see? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes indeed. Okay. Let's start. Sorry about that. Um, so we continue the stories from the Lotus Sutra. So yesterday we've done the first parable. Today we will do the second and the third parable. Okay, the parable of the poor son. So I'll talk about the, uh, the, the stories in the sutra first, then I'll make some explanation after that. In the sutra, it said, Suputi, Maha Kasayana, Maha Kasaba, and Maha Mogaliyayana are very happy after hearing the rare Dharma directly from the Buddha, and that Sravakas was assured of attaining supreme awakening. They see themselves as extremely fortunate because without even seeking for it, they have acquired something great and good, a rare treasure. They would like to use a parable to clarify what it is. In the past, there was a boy who left his father when he was very young. He ran away from home and lived in other lands for a long time, say 20 or even 50 years. The old man, uh, so the, the older this man become, the poorer, uh, the poorer and um, needier he became. Because he was so poor, he had to wander around in looking for food, clothing and food. Later by chance, this man finally was heading towards his homeland. The father of this man was very worried uh, after his son gone missing. The father tried hard to find his son, but he was not able to get him. Now he was living in another city. 
his households, uh, his household had become very wealthy. His goods and treasures are incalculable: gold, silver, lapis lazuli, coral, amber, crystal, and other gems overflowed his storehouses. He got lots of workers working for him. He employed grooms and servants, clerks and attendants. He also owned stocks. He got countless elephants, horses. Uh, carriages, oxen, and sheep. He was very successful, and、uh, with his business and his revenue and investments spreading to other places. There are many merchants, traveling traders in the place where he stayed. At that time, oh, sorry, actually,、uh, at this time, the sun was wandering through village after village. And passing through various lands and cities, at the end, he arrived at the city where his father was now living. Although his son had left home and had been away for more than fifty years, the father had always been thinking about him. Though he constantly thought of his son, he kept it to himself. The father had never told anyone about this. Everything now and then, his heart was filled with remorse and regret. He thought, "I'm now old and worn out. I am rich and have great wealth, gold, silver, and rare treasures overflowing my storehouses. But I have no children, no son. When my death comes." All my wealth will be scattered and lost, because there is no one to whom I can leave it. Because of this, he always thought of his son sincerely. If only could I get my son back and entrust my wealth to him, I shall be so contented and happy without having an anxiety. The poor son traveled through different places. Shifting from one job to another, and he suddenly arrived at his、uh, father's house. Standing by the gate, he saw an old man from distance sitting on a lion seat. His feet were on a jewel footstool, and the strings of pearls with ten tens of millions adorned his body. This rich man was surrounded by Brahmins. Nobles and ordinary people, the attendants and servants with white fly whisks stood by on both sides. He was sitting under a jeweled、um, canopy, and flowers are hung down on the streamer. Perfume was sprinkled on the ground, and all kinds of celebrated flowers were scattered around, and valuable. Things were set in rows for his approval or rejection. With all these luxury accessories, he looked majestic and distinguished. From all these observations, the poor son thought his、uh, this old man must have great power, and he felt frightened and regretted to have come to this place. He secretly thought to himself, "This old man must be a king or something like a king. This is not a place for me to earn a living. I better go to some poor town where I can be paid for my labor, and where food and clothing will be easier to get. If I stay here, I may be captured or forced to work." So he quickly ran away. At that time, the elder, elderly gentleman on the lion seat recognized his son at the first sight. Filled with joy, he thought, "This is my son. He comes back finally. At last, I have the one to whom my stores of wealth are to be entrusted. I've always been thinking of my son, but had no way to see him. Now suddenly." He has come by himself. My wish is completely fulfilled. I'm old and worn out. I yearn for an heir.
The father quickly sent, sent his workers and servants to follow his son and quickly bring him back. Very soon, they captured the poor man. Then the poor son was very frightened and yelled, I do not know you. I had not offended you and had done nothing, uh, had done, done, uh, have done nothing wrong. Why you have to, um, why you want to take me? He thought that he would become a prisoner and surely would be put to death. He felt so terrified and desperate. Then he fainted. The father, seeing this from a distance, told the messengers, Oh, I don't need this man. Don't force him to do anything. Sprinkle some cold water on his face and wake him and say nothing more to him. Why did he do this? The father knew that the willpower of the son was weak. He thought that his son was inept and humble. And so his great position would be difficult for his son to take up. He knew perfectly well that the young man was his son. But using skillful means, the father didn't tell anyone about that. The father sent a messenger to tell his son, saying, We are releasing you now. You are free to go whatever you want. So the poor son was delighted. So he got up from the ground and went off to a poor village searching for food and clothing. The rich man wanted to get his son back, so he thought of a way to do that. He secretly sent um, two of his men, who both looked miserable and undignified, to go and tell his poor son that there was a job vacancy for removing dung for him, and he would be given double the normal wage. They should tell him that uh, they would be working together with him. These two messengers did as told. The poor son asked for an advice on, oh, sorry, the poor son asked for it, uh, advance for his wages and then joined them in removing the dung. The father, seeing the son, both sympathy and uncomfortable, uh, on the other day, the, the man saw the son through the window. He looked uh, gaunt, lean, and filthy from the piles of dung, dirt, and uh, filth. After seeing that, the old father took off his necklace, his soft, nice clothing and ornaments, then put on coarse, torn, and dirty clothes, smeared his uh, body with dirt, and took a pen for removing dung in his right hand. He roughly talked to the workers and said, get to work, don't be so lazy. Using this method, the father was able to approach his son, observe him and work with him. Afterwards, he said to, his, uh, said to the son, young man, now you should stay and work here. Do not go anywhere else again. I will increase your wages. You don't have to worry about the supplies like utensils, rice, flour, salt, vinegar, and so on. I will provide you with all these. I'll look after you. And there is even an old servant for you to use if you need it. Take it easy. I'm like a father to you. You don't need to worry anymore. Why do I say this? Because I'm old, but you are young and vigorous. When you are at work, you are never dishonest, lazy, angry, or making any complaints like other servants. You seem to be faultless. I like you a lot. And from now on, you will be like my own son. Then the rich man gave him a new name as he would to a child. The poor son was so happy and thankful for the way he was treated by the old man. But he still thought of himself as an outsider and was just a humble labor. So in the next 20 years, he continued to be employed removing dung. 
working together after 20 years, the poor son and the old man have gained confidence in each other. The son felt he was understood and trusted. He could come and go easily, but he continued to live and work in the same place. Later, the old man became ill. He knew that he would die soon. So he said to the son, I have a lot of gold, silver, and rare treasures overflowing from my storehouses. I want you to have a detailed understanding of the quantities involved and of what should be received and paid out. This is what I have in mind, and I want you to do that. Why? Because from now on, you and I will be no different. You understand what you have to do. Be careful with this job and look after the assets and make no careless losses. After listening to what the old man said, the poor son followed his instructions and took over the surveillance of all the goods, the gold, silver, and other valuables in different various storehouses. He carefully looked after this treasure, but he did not want any of these items. He did not even expect to receive a meal for himself as reward. He continued to live in the place where he had lived before and was still unable to get rid of his sense of, of infi, uh, inferior, sorry, inferiority. After some time, the father noticed that his son was gradually becoming more confident and accomplished and had despised his former low opinion of himself. Later, when the old man knew that his life was coming to the end, he ordered his son to arrange a meeting with his relatives, the king, the ministers, nobles, and ordinary citizens. When they had all assembled, the father said to them, gentlemen, I should have told you that this is my son, my biological son. He left me and ran away at a young age when he stayed in another city. For over 50 years, my son had been living in many places in loneliness and suffering. This is his original name. He is really my son and I'm his father. Now all my wealth belongs entirely to my son and all my earlier disbursements and receipts are known to this, this son. Buddha, when the poor son heard these words of his father, having gained what he had never had before, he was filled with great joy. And he thought, without any intention or effort on my part, these treasures have now come to me by themselves. This very rich man is Buddha, and we are all like his children. Buddha has always treated us as his children. But Buddha, because of the three kinds of sufferings, we are living in the midst of birth and death with anxieties. Because we are confused and ignorant, we enjoy being attached to the teaching of the two vehicles. Today, the Buddha had led us to ponder carefully and to cast aside such teachings and the feel of for, um, of um, frivolous debate. In the past, we were delight, uh, we were diligent. Sorry, we are diligent and make progress all the way until we reach nirvana, which is like having received one day's wage. At once we got that, our hearts were filled with great joy, and we are satisfied and considered that is enough. We said to ourselves. Because we have been diligent learning and practicing Buddha Dharma, we have gained so much. However, Buddha knows that we were attached to unworthy desires and delighted in the teaching of the two vehicles. Buddha let us go on our own way, saying, you will also have the insight of the Tathagata, your portion of the treasury. Because Buddha uses the power of skillful means to teach us 
his wisdom. We attain nirvana, which is like getting one day's wages. We thought that is great gain to us, and that is why we never devoted ourselves to seeking the great vehicle. In addition, though we expounded and set forth the Buddha's wisdom for the sake of the Bodhisattvas, we did not aspire to attain it. Why was it like this? The Buddha, knowing that we are only delighted in the two vehicles' teachings, used it his power for Uh, used his power of skillful means to teach us according to what was appropriate for us. But still, we did not see that we are the children of the Buddha. But now we know. We realize that the Buddha does not hold back his wisdom from anyone. Why do we say this? From ancient time, we were really children of the Buddha, but we only took pleasure in the two vehicles' teachings. If we had had a mind to take Uh, pleasure in great things, the Buddha would have taught us the great vehicle Dharma. Now in this sutra, the Buddha teaches only the one vehicle, um, although in the past he spoke disparagingly in the presence of bodhisattvas of the Sravakas liking for lesser teachings. In reality, he was using the great vehicle to teach and transform us. Therefore, we say that Though we had no hope or expectation of it, now the great treasure of the king of the Dharma has come to us by itself. Since it is something that children of the Buddha should acquire, we have all acquired it. Okay, so this story is about the poor son going back home to his father after many years of wandering elsewhere. After the son comes back, the rich father purposely let him look after the wealth and treasures step by step. All this wealth belongs to the son, but the father does not tell him in the beginning. The poor son does not know he is the son of the rich man. The father thinks if he suddenly tells the poor son uh, about their relationship, this poor son will not believe him or get frightened. So the father let him learned how to look after these well first. When he gets familiar dealing with all these assets, he tells this poor son their relationship and tells him that all the wealth belongs to him. This story tries to show us that after the Shravakas become Arahat, Buddha will teach them the teachings for becoming Bodhisattvas. Even though they may not uh, have the interest or understanding of it, this is a skillful means that Buddha use. Buddha teaches them the Mahayana teachings and guides them to become bodhisattvas. The poor son comes back and the rich man teaches him and guides him. So he slowly gains confidence and manages all the treasures in the end. This is like Buddha teaching all sentient beings And when the right causes and conditions are met, Buddha says, you are all bodhisattvas, and in the future, you will all become Buddhas. We should all initiate uh, the Bodhi mind, practice bodhisattva acts, and benefit others. After working for his rich father for some time, the son knows how much money, properties, assets, and workers are in the household. He also knows how much they have to go to pay out and how much they earn in trade, etc. But the only thing that he does not know is that he is the son of the rich man. So all the time, he thinks that all these assets have nothing to do with him. This is the same like when Buddha tells the Shravakas to teach others um, Bodhisattva's teaching, even if they are not interested. Because of that, they slowly understand and become familiar with the teaching. Later, they will understand the teachings of the one vehicle. This is actually what Buddha wants all followers to practice. This story of the poor son and the rich father show us that after the Arahats come across the Mahayana teachings, and at the end, they fully realize they are Bodhisattvas and they will all become Buddhas. The story of the son who left his father when he was young 
is parallel to the Shravakas moving away from the great vehicle but choosing a smaller vehicle. But in the end, the son goes back to the father, just like the Shravakas, all becoming bodhisattvas and turning back to the great vehicle from the small vehicle. This story showed the process. The poor son is childish. He is not determined and does not have profound knowledge. He runs away from his father when he was young and at, at the age of seven or eight. He goes back to the father about 50 or 60. This is like the relationship between the Shravakas and the Buddha. The Buddha has taught the Lotus Sutra to Shariputra and Mogaliyayana and other disciples in the past. And they have initiated the Bodhi mind in the past and have planted the roots of Mahayana. So they are like the son of Buddha. In the story, the father misses his son and is upset that his fortune has gone no one to pass on. This is like Buddha who already taught us the Mahayana teachings, but we forgot about it. So we are suffering in the cyclic existence without realizing it. Buddha wants to give us all the treasures he had so we shall not suffer again and be liberated. We are the son of the Buddha. Buddha wants us to practice Buddha Dharma and teach others Dharma as well. So the teachings can be passed on to the future generation. The poor sons leaving his dad is like the Shravakas do not practice the Bodhisattva path and reject the Mahayana teaching and practices. They have initiated their Bodhi mind in the past. So they are just wandering around and lost their sense of direction. So they are going on a different path uh, at the time. This is also like all sentient beings living in this world. When the situations become too hard or too difficult, we shall, feel, uh, we, we shall feel depressed and want to escape. We have initiated our body mind, but we do not, but we do the opposite. We fall into the five destinies of hell, hungry ghosts, animals, humans, and heaven, and we keep on transmigrating nonstop in the cyclic existence. The son has not planned a uh, plan to go back to his father. He goes, he just go in, into the city where the father is uh, living uh, in by co coincidence. They then meet. In contrast, the father has been looking for his son in different places for many years, and he has never forgotten about the lost son. The son become poorer and older, but he still does not want to go home. He could not remember his family, nor from where did he come from. The father, the rich man, represents Buddha. The rich man has wealth, treasures. These are similar to the unlimited merits Buddha has, the perfection, the perfection in virtues. The father looks dignified. And this is the same like the hallmarks, the powers, and the perfection of Buddha. The jewels that the rich man wears symbolize the precepts, concentration, and the wisdom of the Buddha. The wis that the rich man hold means Buddha is pure and had no defilements. The beautiful cover and the flower ornaments re represents the four uh, immeasurable minds, a mind of infinite loving kindness, infinite compassion, infinite joy, and infinite equanimity. The father recognizes his son, but the son does not recognize his father. The son is frightened when he catches the dignified look of the rich man. He feels that he needs to escape fast because this place is not ideal place for him to work. It is too good. He thinks that he should go somewhere else that is in a lower class uh, so he can earn a living by doing physical work. The mindset of the poor man shows sentient beings are weak and timid. They will be afraid when meeting the Buddha who has accomplished the perfect enlightenment. Sentient beings are afraid of the practice of the Bodhisattva path 
because it seems too difficult and it takes a long time. So they just want to attain self-liberation quickly. The son is so scared that he wants to run away. He even fainted. His father does not want to scare him, so he used skillful ways to help his son. If we understand Buddha Dharma, we shall know that there is nothing to be afraid of. The father asks his workers to suggest the poor man to work in his place in order to see if his son can stand hardship. He offers a low job for him to clean dirt and carry the dung. Later, he wants to get closer to his son and help him. He even took off his fine clothes and, drew, uh, and jewels and wear similar clothing as the son. He also picks up the tools for cleaning and works with the son. This is like Buddha, who gives us by expedient means the teachings that help liberate us from sufferings in the free realms. His teachings include, first, the uh, Four Noble Truths, the truth of suffering, the truth of the arising of suffering, the truth of the cessation of suffering, and the truth of the path to the cessation of suffering. Second, the four stations of mindfulness. The mindfulness of the body as impure, mindfulness of feelings as suffering, mindfulness of the mind as impermanence, and mindfulness of dharmas as a dependent without self-entity. The poor son slowly gained experience and confidence after working for the rich man for 20 years. <laughs> this shows us that if sentient beings work hard, we will gain more virtues and merits, and this will lead uh, to their changes in learning Mahayana teachings. And this will enable them to meet Buddha again because they, are, they, ha, they all have planted their Bodhi seeds in the past. The son is so delighted at the end when he knows that the rich man is his father and all the assets and fortunes are his. Looking back at the story, we are the poor son and Buddha is the rich father. Buddha wants us all uh, wants all of us, his children, to be bodhisattvas and ultimately become Buddhists in the future. Buddha used expedient ways to teach us. Buddha tell us again and again that there are lots of sufferings in the evil paths and we should practice diligently so that we shall not be transmigrating in the cycle of life and death repeatedly. Buddha also talked to us gently and explained uh, explains us the benefits of practicing precepts, concentration, and wisdom. Buddha used different methods to tell us to work harder in our practice to relieve us from, from suffering. No matter how poor we are, we are the son of the Buddha, and we shall obtain the fortune from our father, the Buddha, one day. So this is another um, painting, the wall painting in the uh, Dunhuang cave. So this depicts this, uh, this parable stories. So the, the, uh, the, the man is cleaning the, the dung and probably the father is sitting on the chair there and a lot of people coming to visit him, he's rich. So um, it's quite interesting. All this uh, sutra becomes like wall paintings. Okay, so, okay. The next parable is the parable of the medicinal herbs. In the sutra, Buddha told Mahakasava that uh, Buddha is the king of the Dharma because he is liberated from all sufferings and achieved Buddhahood. The teachings are all truth. He preaches teachings through the wise use of skillful means. All these Dharma teachings can lead sentient beings to a state of comprehensive wisdom. Buddha understands sentient beings' mindset, and he even knows where they will be in, the, in their future lives. Buddha has no obstacles or confusion in anything. Moreover, 
having most um, through understandings, thorough understandings um, of all the teaching, he showed his all-encompassing wisdom to living beings. Buddha said, for example, Kasapa, in the 3,000 great thousand-fold world, there are plants on the mountains, along rivers and streams, and on different soils. Plants such as trees, thickets, forests, and medicine, medicinal herbs, widely ranging in variety, each with its name and color. When the dense cloud um, spread over all of them, they covered the whole 3,000 great thousand fold world and rain pulled down evenly at the same time. The moisture reaches all the plants, trees, thickets, forests, and medicinal herbs equally to their little roots, little stems, little branches, little leaves, their medium-sized roots, medium-sized stems, medium-sized branches, medium-sized leaves, their big roots, big stems, big branches, and big leaves. And also, all the trees, no matter large or small, whether they are superior, middling, or inferior, receive their share. The rain from the same clouds helps the growth of these plants according to their natures and kinds, causing them to grow, bloom, and bear fruits. Even though these plants all grow in the same soil and are moistened by the same rain, these plants and trees have their differences and particulars. You should understand, Kasapa, that the Tathagata is also like this. He appears in the world like the rising of a great cloud. His great cloud voice, uh, great, sorry, his great loud voice spread all over the world of human and heavenly beings and assurers, just like the great cloud covering the 3,000 great thousand for world. In the great assembly, Buddha says, I am a Tathagata, worthy of offerings, truly awakened, fully clear in conduct, well done, understanding the world, excelled leader, trainer of people, teacher of heavenly beings and people, Buddha, world honor one. I will help all beings. Those who have not yet been saved will be saved. Those who have not been set free will be set free. Those who have had no rest will have rest. Those who have not yet attained nirvana will attain nirvana. I understand both the present world and this and the world comes as they are. I am the one who knows all, sees all things. The one who knows the way, open the way, teach the way, and teaches the way. Come to me, all, all you human, heavenly beings, assurers, and others. You should come and hear the Dharma. At that moment, innumerable tens of millions of billions of kinds of living beings come to where Buddha is to hear and learn the Dharma. At that time, Buddha observes all these beings to see whether they are keen or dull, persevering or lazy. Then he used suitable teachings and unlimited variety of methods to teach and guide them according to their standards and abilities. So these beings can gain happiness and, uh, and benefits. After hearing the Dharma, these sentient beings can gain peace and security in their present lives. They will be reborn in a good place in the next life. These beings will find happiness from hearing the Dharma and practicing the Dharma because they will be freed from obstacles. When they practice more, they will have more freedom and abilities and gradually enter the road to Buddhahood. Just like, uh, just like the great clouds, the rain all cover, uh, also cover all the plants, trees, thickets, forests, and medicinal herbs. And according to the nature of these plants, 
each of them equally receive moisture that let them grow and develop. This is like the Dharma teaching by Buddha, which has one character and one flavor. For example, to attain liberation, free from marks, nirvana, and attain the universal wisdom. If there are sentient beings who hear the Dharma through embracing, reading, reciting, practice as the teachings, they will gain merit, but they may not know it. Why is that? Because only the Buddha understands this kind, uh, the kinds, the characters, the embodiments, and the nature of all these living things. What is in their minds? How do they think? And what do they practice? He understands what teaching suits them, which teachings they are contemplating and practicing, and what kind of teachings and ways to help them, what they have in their mind, what, the, what, they, what they think, and the future results from their practice after receiving different teachings and methods. In all these uh, varieties of circumstances, uh, circumstances and environments that the uh, sentient beings live in, only the Buddha can see the situation clearly and understand them without hindrances. The sentient beings are just like those plants trees, thickets, flowers, and the medicinal herbs. They do not know their own nature. They do not know whether they are superior, middling, or inferior in nature. Okay, we'll explain the story now. So the plants in the story are referred to as medicinal herbs. They are, uh, there are small medicinal herbs, medium-sized medicinal herbs, and big size medicinal herbs. But there are also big and small trees. All these plants grow well with the abundance rainwater. This story is a metaphor for Buddhists preaching Dharma to different sentient beings according to their practice, interests, and karmic conditions. After a period, they will uh, all attain Buddhahood. There are five types of plants. Among the medicinal herbs, there are, the, there are a small size one, medium size one, and big size herbs. With the trees, they, there are small and big trees. These plants represent different individuals. They are all different, but in the end, they will follow the one vehicle. Expedient means are later used to help these sentient beings to reach the ultimate goal. Buddha always used different Dharma teaching methods to suit their individual needs. So within the 3,000 great thousandfold world, there are plants on the mountains, along rivers and streams, and on different soils. There are plants such as trees, thickets, forests, and medicinal herbs, wide, uh, widely ranging in variety and each with its name and color. So there are uh, the three varieties of medicinal herbs. Oops, sorry. Okay. The small size medicinal herbs. They have little roots, little stems, little branches, and little leaves. And the medium size uh, medicinal herbs, medium, they have medium sized stems, uh, medium sized branches, and medium sized leaves. And the big size medicinal herbs, they have big roots, big stems, big branches, and big leaves. So the varieties of the trees are the big and the small ones. So the rain refers to Buddha, especially the Dharma teaching of the Buddha. Rain water nurtures all plants. Different variety of plants absorb different amount of water. With that, they will all grow. Small herbs need less water when compared with the big trees. This is similar to human beings too. Human beings need to drink a few cups of water per day to survive, while birds only need a small spoon of water or even a few drops. These plants also grow differently the growth time for each plant is not the same. All these plants are growing on the same piece of land. So competition for survival is fair and equal. This refers to sentient beings who have all initiated their bodhi vow, have practiced 
have performed wholesome or unwholesome deeds and have received their karmic results in the world. According to different karmic conditions, they will be born in different realms like the human realms, heavenly realms, and the realms of Asura, hungry ghosts, and animals. Even uh, when they are born as human beings, they are different and they work in different fields. They can be lawyers, doctors, artists, musicians, chefs, and monks. Some people are emotional and some are rational. Some people are wealthy and some are poor. Some of them are cleverer than others. And all these differences are the results of their karma. If a person has painted and uh, has planted, sorry, has planted the wholesome roots for the human and heavenly realm, they will be born in the human and heavenly realm. If people practice the Shravaka teachings, love the world and want to attain Nirvana quickly, they will be reborn at a place that are associated with Shravaka teaching. For someone who has a Bodhi heart, they will be reborn in the places where the Bodhisattvas practices. The rain falls from the clouds. The clouds represent the sounds of the Dharma teaching. Clouds can cover all land. Similarly, Buddha's teaching reaches everywhere, guiding all sentient beings. Some may ask if Buddha's teaching can be heard everywhere. Why is it that not everyone hears them? Some people have no chance to hear the Dharma, uh, the Dharma because of stop, uh, obstacles created by their own defilements. For Buddha, he would not give up on anyone. If anyone wants his help, he definitely teaches and helps them with compassion. When we want to make a connection with Buddha and the Buddha Dharma, Buddha will show up as the dense clouds. Some people also ask if the rain is the same, why do people hear different Dharma teaching, like the Shravaka teaching? Buddhist Dharma teachings are equal, but because sentient beings are not the same, they have different needs. Some want deeper teaching, some just want the basic one. Depending on what the sentient being needs, Buddha will use an appropriate method of teachings uh, to guide them along towards the goal. Just like the plants, we have got big and small plants. They need different amount of water for growth. Similarly, people of different um, calibers may want teachings of the five vehicles or three vehicles or one vehicles. Do not think only Mahayana is the only teaching to help them all. Also, the small herbs will slowly grow and become medium-sized herbs. Later, it can further grow and become a big size herb. Likewise, a small tree can become a big tree. So those who wants to be reborn in the human and heavenly realm or the Shravakas may have chances to learn and practice the Bodhisattva's teachings. So they can be Bodhisattva in the future and enter the path of the one vehicle. Sentient beings can be depressed, not happy, and not satisfied. They have problems, but they do not want to work hard to solve them, or they simply do not know the way to do it. Buddha Dharma is like the rainwater to these plants, nurturing their body, which is already dry and unhealthy. So if we, list, uh, so if we follow the Buddha Dharma, there are three advantages. Uh, one, have peace in the present life. If we live according to what is laid down in the Buddha Dharma, we should be less suffering. There should be less suffering and we can live happily. If someone's action is irrational and wrong, they will suffer in the future. But if they make a change now and follow the Buddha Dharma, their future will be better. If someone has committed some unwholesome actions, but they practice and follow Buddha Dharma, they will receive themselves, uh, sorry, they will relieve themselves from sufferings and uh, like being bullied, be in a disaster or lead a short life. A real Buddhist will live with the right view in peace and will not be confused. Two, rebirth in a better place in future lives. People will be reborn in the human or heavenly realm 
and their merits and wisdom will continue to grow. Three, happiness from attaining liberation. The mind of the people will be free from afflictions. They will be awakened to a, re a reality and will break from the attachments and suffering. Okay, so small size medicinal herbs refer to those who have taken the free refuges, uphold five precepts, and practice 10 wholesome deeds, which will lead them rebirth in the human and heavenly realm. With abundance, rainwater, and the right conditions, they will bear small flowers and small fruits. For human beings, it is, best, uh, it is the best to reborn as the will-turning sage king. In heaven, they will be reborn as Shraka of the Treya Shrima uh, Shrimsa's heaven or the king of the great Brahman heaven. And the medium-sized medicinal herbs refers to those uh, who practice the teachings of the two vehicles. The teachings can help sentient beings to transcend the mundane world. It includes the Shravakas and the Pratyaka Buddhas. Along the, Shraka, uh, the, along the Shravakas, the top rank is an Arahat. They are liberated and they have six uh, supernatural abilities. So the power of an impeded bodily action, which allows the Buddha to go anywhere in a flesh. Two, the power of divine vision. They can see the full course of passage by sentient beings through the six destinies. Three, the power of divine hearing. They can hear all the words of suffering and joy experienced by living beings in the six destinies. Four, the power of, uh, uh, sorry, the power to read uh, others' minds. They know the thoughts of all beings who pass through the six destinies. Five, the power of uh, knowledge of previous lives. They know the events of countless uh, kalpas of uh, previous lifetimes experienced by them, as well as the beings is the, in the six destinies. Six, the power of purifying all defilements. They can completely extinguish all the afflictions of the free realms, and thus they will no longer be subjected to have, uh, having rebirth in the free realms. Pratyaka Buddhas loves to live alone. They meditate and practice the contemplation of the 12 links of dependent arising. That is ignorance, volitional formation, consciousness, name and form, the six sense faculties, contact, say, uh, sensations, feelings, uh, desire, craving, then grasping, clinking, uh, the 10th is becoming ex an existence, the 11th birth, and the 12th aging and death. So the big size medicinal herbs uh, to the, uh, refers to those uh, who practice the Bodhisattva path, the Mahayana practitioners. They have initiated their body mind. They practice diligently in meditation and helping others. They are the worldly uh, bodhisattvas. So there are two types of trees mentioned. The small trees are those bodhisattvas focusing on attaining Buddhahood. They will not retreat to the Shravaka path or the mundane world because they have attained the stage of non-regression. They are advancing themselves all the time. They practice the six parameters and always benefit others. They are bodhisattvas that enter the first of the 10 bhumis. They know they will attain Buddhahood. Even though they are, uh, these are small trees, they will grow and become bigger. This is similar to the bodhisattvas progression in the 10 bhumis. The big trees represent the great bodhisattvas of the seventh or the eighth uh, boomies uh, and uh, both. 
like the uh, Avalok, uh, sorry, like the Manjusari Bodhisattva and the Avalokiteshrava Bodhisattva. They have boundless abilities and they can benefit uncountable sentient beings, relieving them from their sufferings and make them happy. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, cave painting depicting this uh, parables. You see, uh, it's uh, raining heavily and, and all the people and animals are, are, are very happy, uh, gathering and dancing and celebrating because with the rain, they will have uh, the crops can grow and they will have a happy life uh, because of having food and everything's nurtured and grows well. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, oops. yeah, 